In 2014, John Wood ran against Maxine Waters for the 43rd Congressional District seat. I'm Michael Real, and this is RealRiverNews.com. We have an exclusive interview with John Wood Jr., the young Republican. that's overwhelmingly, you know, well, largely white and, uh, and, and old, you know. Uh, so what made I, you become a Republican? Yeah, well, there, there are a couple of things that, that, that went into that. First of all, I really, I really cut my teeth uh, getting back into politics on something at a professional level, working for the Obama campaign in 2008. You know, I hope we we're in, we are in the inner city right now. We're in that's the right. heart of uh, South Central Los Angeles, mm -hmm. a... Um, you know, a global global name. Right. You say uh, South 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 Central Los Angeles. Right. Everybody around the world knows where, where it is. Yeah. What can the Republican Party do, from your perspective, mm -hmm. to change and improve the lives of the constituency and the residents here in right. Southern California and South Central? Well, there are a few there are a few different things the Republican Party needs to focus on out here. Um, on the one hand, from a governmental aspect, uh, I believe that we can be vital in well, creating a two-party consensus over issues pertaining to things like drug policies, perhaps, wherein take a look at drug sentencing standards, the way they disproportionately impact African Americans. We can take a look at reforming certain practices within the criminal justice system so as to see to it that young men of color you know, are basically treated on an equitable platform in that system. That, that's, that's, that's something on a policy level that we can be a part of effective. On an economic level, which is just as important, if not more so, right. it's vital now, you know, the party is going to advocate for lower taxes, lesser regulations. Uh, in a broad sense, that's good for the larger American economy. Particularly as it pertains to the inner city economy, though, there are two things we ought to focus on. One, I think strengthening uh, the welfare system and the unemployment system in a manner that focuses on transition as opposed to what people refer to as dependence. I, I personally have never been opposed to a social safety net, but we need to see to it that the resources from these programs go towards getting people educated, whether it be uh, in a community college setting, whether it be in a vocational study setting. Uh, and see to it that, you know, as part of that social safety net that we put some springs underneath it to bounce people back up into independence. And I don't really look at that as a partisan position, but it is something that there should be some bipartisan consensus on. And thirdly, I would say, and this is perhaps the most important, on a communal level, Republicans who are not politicians, Republicans who are not party officials, but who are business owners, who sure. are men and women of faith, who are people who just want to see the health of the community revitalized, Republicans like that need to come into the community, need to start interacting and relating with young folks in the inner city, and we need to develop some relationships that basically put the barriers of party aside and say, look, I've got a business, I'm looking for some people, for some young people who, who want a shot at being, at being productive, at being able to provide for themselves, and uh, how about I go and give this young man an opportunity, you know? Uh, on a community sort of level, we need to have some real more human to human, uh, person to person collaboration. I really think that in the long run, uh, that kind of community of goodwill, community building based on goodwill, 
is the thing that will bring, I think, some real bipartisan consensus where it matters the most and impact the inner city in a positive way. You burst on the scene uh, in this recent election cycle. You were running for the uh, 42nd, 43rd. 43rd con Congressional District here in Los Angeles. That's good. Uh, political icon uh, represents that seat now in, yeah. in the nation's capital, uh, Maxine Waters. What was it like for you running against such a, a formidable uh, incumbent? Well, well you know, um, I, uh, I, I think if I had been looking at it in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm David and I'm, I'm taking the fight to Goliath and so forth, I probably would have psyched myself out pretty early on. The, the truth is, is that I, I've always had respect for Maxine Waters. I respect the long, the, uh, I respect her, her accomplishments, the fact that she's really been a, a political pioneer in many, in many respects. And though I have, you know, real and substantive disagreements with her on matters of policy and political approach, I, it was never a matter of personal, uh, you know, personal uh, grievances for me. Sure. I was running for something positive. Mm -hmm. I was running. I, There's a lot of new things going on in the Republican Party. All of us are members of our local Republican Party, and um, as you can see, it's a pretty diverse group here. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for flush flat in the Republican Party. Uh, there's so much dif different uh, philosophical beliefs coming in, and whereas in the, the Democratic Party, things are pretty rigid, the Republican Party has room for anybody's voice to be heard. Are you surprised that the Republican Party, uh, after a little setback with the Romney campaign on the national level. They did a little self-diagnosis and came out and said, hey, we're going after minorities, we're going after women, and we're going after the young vote, the millennial vote. What, do you think, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm not surprised. I, I think that that's what was lacking before Romney, and I'm glad to see that it's actually starting to happen and there's an emphasis on that. And I think that a lot of the young people that are coming in are, are the ones actually doing the work and, and injecting all these new ideas and offering an alternative to uh, the one-party uh, system that's really been dominating California. Uh, but more than anything, it's just offering an alternative to a two-party system that seems to be almost like a one-party system. I see it as uh, the opposite, in a way, where a lot of young people and people where the Republican Party isn't known to be familiar with, those people are actually talking to each other, especially millennials and young people who are connected. Uh, they're all talking to each other across uh, social media platforms, and they're coming to the Republican Party, whether the Republican Party wants us or not, sometimes. Is this the, the now time for the Republican Party? Is this now, this season? Is the season right to be Republican? We hope so. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a big hope. You know, we'll see what the, uh, what the leadership and, and what they're willing to accept and, and uh, how open-minded they really are. Because I think a lot of uh, young people are coming in with different views and, and uh, hopefully the establishment that's there in control right now is willing to listen to those ideas. The, the Republican Party will only survive from the ground up. And I think that uh, oftentimes the top down is pushing us down a little bit. So as long as young people, minorities and women are embracing the Republican Party, embracing the principles of limited government, of civil rights, I think that we have a, a bright future. No, I, I, you know, I ran not to please the Republican Party, but to, but to try and be a positive force in my community. And that's your passion. Absolutely. Having said that, though, you know, working with the Republican Party um, is going to be part of the for formula for success for the minority community and the African American community in particular uh, moving forward. You know, and you definitely don't have to you don't have to love uh, the modern GOP to recognize the value of doing business with folks who are in a position of political influence because the GOP is going to be around and the Democratic Party is going to be around for a very long time. Right. We might as well have a seat at both ends of the table if we're going to get the As we prepare to close, as a young man, what is your hope, not only for this community, uh, the South Central Watts, Compton, uh, in addition to this area, but on a, on a national level, what's your hope for young African American men who look like you and I yeah. and who confront the problems that we confront? Uh, not only with the, the, the challenges of law enforcement, we talked about the uh, drug disparity laws, uh, we talked about uh, welfare. But, you know, how, what's your hope? Well, you know, it's a longer conversation than we, than we likely have time for. But in a nutshell, 
I would like young young African American men to understand, young black men and women to understand that not only can we succeed in the United States of America, we can actually lead the United States of America. And if the election of Barack Obama proved nothing else, it proved the fact that African Americans have the strength, the power, the resources, and ultimately the opportunity should we seize, should we uh, choose to seize it, and to make it for ourselves uh, where necessary, uh, to actually lead in the United States of America economically, politically, and in any other category we so choose. I want us to feel as if we have ownership of the country uh, that we are forced to build. Uh, Finally, congratulations on your newly elected position with the uh, L.A. County Republicans. What's Thank your new much. title? Well, I'm the second executive vice chairman of the L.A. County GOP. Must yes. be exciting for you. Well, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a stepping stone on the way to greater things uh, for the community. John Wood. Thank you.